In the days before the Pope comes to New York, Fox 5 is taking a look at several large and often debated spiritual issues, among them the afterlife. All right, in this month's Big Idea, Fox 5's Dan Bowens introduces us to a New York doctor who says his brush with death changed his life. Anytime you have a transformative experience like this, it certainly makes you aware that there's something else. It is at the core of our very being. A belief that something is more than what happens between our birth and our death. A belief this life is just the beginning. That soul that was there, that's no longer there, it just doesn't disappear. It, it doesn't just vanish into thin air. There's got to be something beyond. What we've come to understand, first of all, is that consciousness does not become annihilated. Yeah, I don't think there's a day that goes by that in some way I don't think about it. Dr. Anthony Sicoria has experienced it. I was clinically dead. A lightning strike back in 1994. The lightning had hit the building and exited through the phone, and uh, I just happened to be in the way. And so it, it hit me in the face and just sent me flying backwards. And then something unexplainable. I was completely separated and I was going someplace else. Surrounded in a bluish white light. And in that white light was truly the most amazing feeling if you could imagine absolute love and peace. Sicoria, a practicing and successful orthopedic surgeon was revived and in the two decades since, taught himself how to play the piano. Compositions, he says, come from the other side. You're a man of science. You're a man of medicine. How do you explain that? You know, I've, I've struggled with this all of my adult life. We also have clear evidence that in many examples where people have described these so-called near-death or what we call actual death experiences, that their experiences are absolutely not hallucinations. Stony Brook University researcher Dr. Sam Parnia helped conduct the largest ever study into near-death experiences. The people that I study are only those who have objectively gone beyond death. Dr. Parnia's study looked at 2,000 people worldwide who'd suffered some kind of cardiac arrest. It found that more than 40% described some kind of awareness before their hearts were restarted. If you look through cultures, through different ages, children as young as three years old, people from all over the world, from Japan, from India, and, and other places, have all described essentially the same experience. Feelings of peace, feelings of seeing a bright, warm, welcoming light, sometimes a description of going through a tunnel, sometimes encountering a being that's full of love, compassion. Is it enough to prove that there is an afterlife? The evidence so far suggests that at least when we die, the first period after death, that thing that makes us who we are does not become annihilated. Does it continue 5,000 years from now? I can't tell you. The church teaches us that dying is the only way to cross over into the next life. So what happens when you come back from death? Research shows that for many people, even if they weren't religious before, finding faith is a way to provide comfort and meaning. It changes the way you live. It changes your perspective, says Fordham religious education professor Dr. Mary Beth Wordle. If you are a person of, of faith and you believe you're a spiritual being, that sometimes these moments of stress and, and trauma can um, be entryways into conversation with the sacred. If this is all that there is, if we live for 70 years, 80 years, and boom, dead, gone, nothing, then this is like, this is like playing theater. This is, this is like a this doesn't make sense. Why fall in love? Why sacrifice for your children? Why? It doesn't make sense. You know, this, it's, life makes sense if there's eternity. And it took me a long time to, to realize that it's a mystery that I'm never going to understand. I don't have the capability of understanding. Sicoria knows there will always be skeptics. There will always be reasons to think his story is too convenient. It must be a hallucination, the doubters will say. He's also convinced he will always be. I feel blessed in an amazing way because I've been given an opportunity to know that something else exists. I think that's one of the greatest gifts that could ever be given to somebody, and that's understanding and in knowing that this is not all there is. Dan Bowens, Fox 5 News. And head to our YouTube page to hear more about what the doctor says happened to him during his near-death experience. It's pretty fascinating stuff.